So I'd like to tell you personally how I survived the 2007-2008 financial meltdown, the real estate crash, and live to tell about it. Let's do it. All right, this is Chris Haskins with the realestateroundup.com. Thank you for letting for hanging out with me and giving me the opportunity to pour into your life my goal, my mission statement, my ministry to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing. And what I've been learning over the past few months is I not only want to teach at you, I want to teach things at you and to you, but I want to show you teach teach to you what I actually do and what I've lived through as opposed, to try, as opposed to teaching you philosophy and theory. I wanna show you exactly how we did this. And today I'm gonna to show you how I survived 2008. Financial meltdown. I don't know how long you've been in the business or how long you've even been on the planet, but back in 2007, 2008 was one of the biggest financial crises that I've seen in my lifetime. I'm sure there were some when I was younger that I was not aware of. However, 2008 I was, in, I was in the real estate business for around right around four years when the subprime market, the subprime lending market just crashed. So there were no more, we called them no doc loans. What was happening when I got in the business, the strategy was to buy a house, 2003, 2004, buy a house, get negative cash flow because you could buy the house with no documentation. Basically, you could go in and sign and just get the loan, right? <coughs> you could sign to get the loan. You get negative cash flow for two years, and the market was so crazy. I remember Stephen Gunther said it was the wild, wild west. The market was so crazy, you could literally sell that house for twenty thousand dollars more without doing anything to it, even if you just had, if you were losing money every month. So, it was no reason for you to have a strategy or to have skill to be able to buy that house at the right number to cash flow it. So, hence it was unsustainable, it was a false market, and it was something that just w would not last. So I wanna show you, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways, did I get that right? There's seven things that I personally did to survive that crash. What happened was the lender stopped lending, so if you were to buy a property, or, or matter of fact, a lot of investors couldn't even buy properties because they were using hard money, and I'm gonna show you, but you should not be using hard money all the time because those high payments can really wipe you out. I know people that have been, that have moved to Canada because they screwed so many lenders over. Okay, the first one was what I learned how to do right around 2009, a skill that I had no knowledge about when I first started. I didn't even know this existed. What I learned how to do was to raise private capital, raise private money. I know you might be watching this video and saying, well, Chris, what in the world is private money? Well, I'm glad you asked. Private money is where we actually turn ordinary people or ordinary couples into a bank. So what we'll do is, opposed, as opposed to going to a bank to borrow $100,000 to flip a house, we'll actually go to Mr. and Mrs. Smith and access their <coughs> IRAs or their 401ks or capital that they have set aside, not for everyday use, capital that they have uh, set, set aside that might be getting them a low rate of return. So what we do is we go and we borrow that money and pay them. Now they were paying six to eight percent, but back in 2008, nine, we were paying 10 to 12 percent. So the market has kind of gone back to normal from what I understand because I wasn't borrowing private money before the crash. So raising private money literally allowed me to buy, still buy any house I wanted because I didn't have to worry about getting qualified for the loan, which is great if you are an investor and you know how to raise private money. The one thing you will need is something called a prospectus. You will need a prospectus. If you're going to sit down with somebody that has capital, you need to have, you need, you need to look professional or we need to look professional when we sit down with these people. You don't want to just sit down and not have anything to say to them. So raising private capital, raising private money allowed me to stay in the business while all of, a lot of my counterparts were falling by the wayside. God bless them. As a matter of fact, a lot of them were just, are just gone. Okay, the next thing I learned, next thing I did w w during the real estate bubble or the real estate crash, the bust, if you will, I had rental property. I owned rental property. The good thing about rental property is the monthly rents come in whether we go to work or not. Yes, I did have some tenants that I had to evict 
higher than normal, I would say, at that time because they were going through the recession as well. So I had rental property that still paid me every month. I didn't have to go out there and crank out deals. And wholesaling was very challenging back then because all the, uh, I, let's say mom and pop buyers couldn't get qualified for loans. All right, the next thing I did was I had multiple streams of income. Multiple streams, oh, I didn't put my, uh, I had multiple streams of income. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Not only do I do real estate, I'm on the internet making money, I do coaching and training. I also, once again, have rental property, so I had multiple streams coming in. I didn't have to worry about wholesaling or, or possibly flipping a house. I never knew when the buyer would qualify for that loan to take me out, right, to get my money back. So one of the keys to business in general, being an entrepreneur, multiple streams of income. As we get into the world or the age of communication age, the attention age, Social media, I like to look at the internet as, as social media as social media as nothing but the state of the internet. Gary Vee says social media is nothing but the state of the internet. So multiple streams of income now for me goes even beyond. Now we're getting into social marketing, which, which is exactly what you're looking at me now. We get paid just for creating content on a daily basis. So I recommend you to do that too. <clears throat> Another thing I had was Low overhead. I had low overhead. In 2008, nine, my rents, well, was I renting then? No, I, I owned several rental properties. That's right, my mortgage payment was low on my owner occupant property. My mortgage payment was low. So I kind of dug in. I didn't necessarily like the house that I lived in. It wasn't the biggest house in the world, but it, my expenses were low, which means my utilities were low, my gas, my electricity. Cable bill probably stay the same, but I had low utilities, low overhead, and I didn't have an office, and I still work from home. So working from home allowed me to wipe out any type of overhead that was going out. Where the big boys might have an office, <clears throat> they might have an assistant. They've got uh, they have people that they have have to pay every week. So I kept my overhead low, and it allowed me to be sustained throughout 2007, 2008, and beyond. Another thing I had was access to credit access to credit i personally had back then i had these big old credit cards right thirty forty thousand dollars worth of credit on these credit cards i don't advise everybody to do this but if you have access to credit and you have bills coming due you get to pay them pay the bills with the credit card and then over time you can replenish or pay down that credit line so having access to credit was one of the things that i immediately did when the subprime market fell out. So I went and got me some, I raised the limits on my credit cards. All right, the next thing that I did to survive the bust was I had multiple exit strategies. Multiple exit strategies, class. Multiple exit strategies. What do I mean by that? Not only do we want to, I know you probably want to be wholesaling and all that stuff, but wholesaling only has, <coughs> in the general in the general terms of wholesaling, we're gonna buy low and sell a little bit low, right? Buy low, sell relatively low. Or in the renovation world, we're gonna buy low and sell high. So multiple exit strategies, I looked into buying subject two, or even wholesaling subject two, which I'll get into another video of that. Wholesaling lease options, sandwich lease options, owner finance, seller carry back, contract for deeds, these exit strategies are stuff that kept me in the business when wholesaling or renovation, renovating wasn't really cranking that fast, right? So, but I was still using private money. But multiple exit strategies. Learn these strategies, class. And if you need me to teach you how to do some of this stuff, just go back through my channel. I'll teach you exactly some of how these exit strategies work. And if you want a consultation, just shoot me an email. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is I looked for discounts. I looked for discounts. I was always on the hunt, always on the hunt <coughs> for discounts. When the market goes in the trash, so I have learned, so I have learned, I've lived this. I want to be a practitioner, not just teach at you, I want to teach with you. I've learned that when chicken goes on sale, you gotta look for it, where is it gonna be? When the market crashes, you gotta look for it, where the discounts are gonna be. So I was able to buy properties 
at huge discounts because nobody else wanted them. Literally, the buyers were out of the market and I was coming in the market. I'm like, you know what? My mentor told me, Chris, when everybody's running that way, you need to be running this way. So I went in a very aggressively and I got some huge discounts on short sales where people owed 100, 150,000. We, we were able to buy some of these houses for 15, 20 cent on the dollar. We're buying houses, even now and still today, pre-1995 prices class. This stuff is out there. I promise you it's out there, but you got to look. The good book says the world is reserved for the lookers, all right? The lookers and the askers. So these are just a few things that I implemented to sustain me during the 2008, 2008 financial meltdown. I remember when Bush came on TV, it was, it burned in my head. I feel like it was just yesterday. It came on TV with that red banner going over his head with that serious face talking about how they have to inject $700 billion to sustain our society. It's just very, very challenging times for a lot of people. God bless the ones that weren't able to sustain themselves, but these, this is what I did. So if you like a consultation, shoot me an email. I think my email should be in this video below. If you need coaching or training or any type of documents, let me know. I'm here to serve. One of the things I pride myself in is being able to serve you, pour into your life. We are reaching two mil two million views, <laughs> two million views. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers. Keep it on truck. And my goal is to be the number one real estate slash entrepreneur a YouTube channel on YouTube. So it's Chris Haskins with the real estate roundup.com. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Peace.